we are good to go. Okay. Hello, everyone listening to the recording. Um, today is our um, our last uh, session here before we actually have our on-site COD Summit in Lisbon. But we're fortunate we've got a lot of uh, a lot of content to cover today. We've got the Grid Republic team is going to talk to us about the Charity Engine platform, and we'll see some demo of the content there. We have Stan, who's done some interesting work around decentralized search engines, so we're going to cover that. And at the very end, we're also going to get into a little bit of logistics planning for the COD Summit coming up uh, November 2nd and 3rd in Lisbon, uh, and just talking through logistics and, and topics that the folks in the community are interested in, in us covering. So without further ado, I will hand it over to you, Matthew, and let you guys um, let you guys kick it off. Great. Um, oh, so I'm going to be uh, talking about Charity Engine and some work we've been doing uh, integrating with Filecoin. Let me share a screen. So we've got some slides to walk us through. Tristan Olive is also on the call. Uh, he'll be doing a demo. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, great. So, um, as I mentioned, the agenda is uh, first, uh, I'll talk a little bit about Charity Engine, uh, an overview of our service, some use cases, some projects we're working on. And then Tristan will do a demo of our Filecoin integration. And uh, the overall theme, particularly of the demo, is uh, making data computable. So, by way of overview, um, we describe Charity Engine as a crowdsource cloud service. Um, so we harness volunteer computing capacity for commercial use uh, to generate revenues, which we share with charity and uh, prize draw for, for users. Uh, we also contribute a considerable portion of our capacity to uh, scientific research. So we have revenues we're generating for causes like Oxfam and CARE and uh, compute cycles that we're providing to uh, humanitarian research. Uh, on the latter point, uh, we've donated uh, at this point pretty well over a, a billion uh, core hours to scientific research. Uh, and this is as much limited by our ability to find projects that need large scale compute as, uh, as our uh, resources. So if there's anybody out there in the world of DSI who needs a lot of compute capacity, please be in touch. There's a contact page on our website. Uh, <clears throat> or anybody on this call, Wes has our, our info. Uh, the network has uh, at this point uh, over a million TPU cores, 100,000 GPUs. Uh, we have about two petabytes of distributed storage within our network, which is uh, small scale, I suppose, compared to Filecoin. But ours <clears throat> is... Uh, performant in particular ways that uh, we might get into later. Uh, we allocate these resources uh, by provisioning them in uh, standard instance types of the sort that you would see at AWS or Google. So you get a certain number of CPUs, certain amount of RAM, um, and then you can get as many instances, uh, practically speaking, as you want. Uh, we use software standards as well. Uh, Basically, you can submit your application and we can run basically any Docker container, uh, uh, provided it'll run within the specifications of the instance types we provide. Uh, we have an app store, so we have methods for securing proprietary software. Uh, our first public publishing partner is uh, Wolfram Research, so you can run a Wolfram Engine Mathematica jobs uh, on Charity Engine. Um, Oh, by the way, the system with the App Store is the publisher can specify an hourly rate for use of their software. So when you get your charges, uh, there'll be a charge for computing and a charge for proprietary software if you opted to use it. Uh, access to the system is through uh, a number of fairly easy to use in interfaces. There's an API for programmatic uh, integration. There's a CLI, so you can... Uh, uh, basically from the command line have uh, access to you know hundreds of thousands of cpu cores as if they were on your desktop uh, the cli lets you use command line tools like new parallel that you might be familiar with <clears throat> there's also a, a web ui uh, that makes it nice and easy to 
submit jobs and in particular to um, monitor the status of your, your work. So regardless of the interface you use to submit the job, you can come to the web UI and see kind of what's going on with your workloads. Uh, you can also um, provision and use uh, our compute and storage resources through smart contract. Uh, initially Ethereum, this should ease um, transition to smart contract based integration with Filecoin resources when uh, Filecoin's uh, virtual machine is, is operational. Uh, one thing we're kind of <laughs> excited about is uh, you can now access Charity Engine compute resources basically directly from inside Wolfram language. So if you're a Wolfram Engine or a Mathematica user, uh, just as you're writing your code, there's commands now baked into Wolfram language that let you uh, execute your workloads on Charity Engine. Uh, and we <clears throat> are fully integrated with the Boink ecosystem. Uh, so uh, we've lent basically hundreds of millions of core hours to more than 25 Boink projects uh, as a part of our broader commitment to distributed science. Uh, we have a marketplace that uh, <clears throat> allows third parties to advertise resources. Uh, so providers, for instance, Filecoin service providers can uh, advertise their CPU and GPU capacity, their storage, um, software, uh, for instance, through this publishing program, uh, and, and data sets can all be advertised and people can, can buy and sell. This is a, a beta, in particular, the, the data uh, and the storage are, are early stage, but the, the compute resources uh, work quite nicely. So a couple of key features just to kind of clarify uh, what the platform is. Uh, one really vital point is that the, the system has an integrated batch scheduler. So in some of those interfaces you were looking at before, you just point to your input files uh, and your application container, and then all the, and you say how many instances you want for how long, which mostly is functioning as a cap. Um, but, uh, but basically all the provisioning and scheduling are handled automatically. So you just have to focus on your work. You don't have to think about infrastructure. You're just like, look, I, I have, here's my jobs, here's my application. And uh, you know, I wanna process this on a thousand nodes and you click the button and it, it's, it's all taken care of. Um, also part of the scheduler is uh, the capability to send computations to data rather than vice versa. Um, and computing on data in place is extremely important in a context like Filecoin, uh, where it's basically slow and expensive to take data from the network, move it to a compute resource, and then push the results back. Uh, particularly for large distributed data sets, that's just really undercuts the utility of, of a distributed storage platform. So uh, our scheduler's ability to know where the data is and to send your computations where it needs to go uh, is, is really powerful and comprises, I think, uh, uh, an interesting, adds an interesting dynamic to how cert Filecoin service providers can create value because through programs like Slingshot, if they host popular, widely used data sets, they'll get more computing work. Uh, uh, the software that runs on the, the com participating compute node has two modes. It has a task mode and a service mode. So in task mode, uh, the provider can pull the marketplace for compute jobs. And if it finds the provider sees jobs that uh, they'd like to accept, uh, the client can be launched, run those jobs, and, and exit. So you, you monitor the marketplace and you launch jobs when you see something that's, so to speak, worth your while. The other mode, service mode, uh, runs in the background persistently and uh, utilizes idle resources as they're available. Um, so this can be a, a really optimal way to monetize your compute resources. So for instance, we have a container available for uh, multi-coin proof of work mining. So there's sort of like an infinite workload, <clears throat> infinite volume of work available there. So you can just have this running and whenever uh, your resources have some capacity, uh, it will just mine the optimal coin given the current market prices and difficulty levels. And uh, so by running the client, you could basically always be generating money, hopefully uh, with increasing frequency, 
there will be uh, commercial workloads that you can run um, to generate more revenue than you get through the mining. And uh, alternatively, you can run persistently in, in the background. You can donate your background resources to scientific or medical research where we have quite a large number of projects uh, that have quite a significant need for compute. <clears throat> Some current activities that we're working on. Uh, we're running a neat biosurveillance project with uh, CDC where we're processing a fairly large uh, daily volume of environmental samples to search for evidence of uh, pathogens of concern to the CDC. Um, it's part of our partnership with Wolfram. Um, their Wolfram Alpha project uses our platform actually for large scale data collection. Um, Find Bio, <clears throat> a drug uh, discovery project, does a quite large scale, petabyte scale genomic search. Uh, we've supported uh, the University of Washington Inst Institute of Protein Design um, with their work. They run a distributed computing project called uh, Rosetta to which we've donated a couple million dollars worth of compute time. Um, uh, last year, one of their more notable accomplishments was uh, development of a new uh, COVID vaccine. So it was exciting to be able to support that. We're in no way involved with that research, but we provided a, a meaningful portion of their compute capacity. Um, and uh, about a year or so ago, we did a quite large uh, computation uh, for what's called the sum of three cues, which was a mathematics problem, which had been unsolved for over a hundred years. And uh, we were able to help the researchers there kind of brute force their way into a, into a solution, which was exciting. Uh, we have, these are just representative. We have a bunch of cool projects, particularly uh, ones that we hope we'll, we'll be able to talk about more before the end of the year in the categories of big data, distributed science and distributed AI. Uh, so that brings us to the demo part. So at this point, I'll hand it over to Tristan, who will just uh, show you what it looks like to use the platform uh, in action. So Tristan, I'm going to stop my screen share, and uh, I guess you can pick sure. up and start sharing yours. Okay. Just give me a moment to get that set up here. Let's see. It looks like this one here. Okay, you should see a, an empty command line terminal here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to set this up as though I'm a, a Filecoin provider of some sort. I have resources available. How do we get computation on this, this data set that we have? So first, you have to have to acquire the setup script that we have. So what do you get for that? Run that over here. So Docker. We have a bunch of flags for this, but we want IPFS support in order for it to work with Filecoin nodes. And we'll set it up with service mode. That means that uh, the client will continue running in the background, accepting new jobs, whereas by default it would it would exit after the completion of any job so that it could be managed by the, the resource provider. So kick this off. First thing it's going to do is, is check for the requirements on the system, make sure all the packages and repositories, like NVIDIA in this case, since we're enabling support for GPU. Uh, we also set up rootless Docker for security reasons. So if there's any kind of a, a container breakout, someone doesn't get root access to the system. And we also do some networking for security also, like lock that down so that it's not just free access to the local network, but everything goes through a, a network container that we have set up. And the, the reason for this is because these, these containers are potentially arbitrary. It's, it's a third party that's submitting them in the marketplace. So we want them to be capable to do the work they need to do, but not give them more than they need. 
the next step is, is downloading the Charity Engine client container. It should just take a moment. We try to make this all as automated as, as simple as possible. So that, that setting it up on a system is not a, a huge task other than just running this, this script to take care of it. Once this is done, it's going to ask for a authenticator. And this is just something that ties the hardware resources here to a specific account. Just to jump in and, and clarify a point, this is showing somebody starting from scratch. So in particular, they were running in service mode. You would do this once to do the install and, uh, and then you just walk away and, and it's running persistently in the background. Correct, yeah. And hey guys, just raising a quick question from the chat. Um, there was this yeah. question about uh, network access. Do you guys have any experience or lessons learned about opening network access or trying to restrict issues like botnet attacks and otherwise it's it's a it's a common topic that a lot of projects are are thinking about uh, with within the context of distributed computing yeah that's a, that's a big big area of concern because if somebody the wrong person gets in the wrong position they could suddenly take control of this giant network so yeah we do a lot with cryptographic signing keys so that nothing can be run without being signed. And and all of the, uh, as far as network openings go, everything's kind of operating in reverse. So the, the client nodes are checking in with the server. The server has no control over the client nodes. It's a, it has to ask for work and then it receives work. So unless that central server gets compromised, then the, there wouldn't be any, any attack vector to the client itself. Slightly different than that. So, um, what, all right, let me change the, the topic slightly. So, does that mean that Charity Engine reviews every workload that runs? Matt, you want to jump in there? Sure. No, we we run um, people. People can run any container, as uh, uh, Tristan was noting. We lock down. First of all, lock down Docker. Uh, so, um, to make it secure to limit prospects for containers breaking sure, out, sure. but uh, but in in particular, uh, Tristan was mentioning before that we uh, lock down all the networking, so there's no networking allowed uh, by the compute jobs while they're running. Except that was, that was my question. Perfect. Except Thank you. except well, there's a there's an important caveat because we do want to allow actually applications to have access to the network because there's a lot of kinds of things people would like to do that have require network access. So we, in effect, have a, a separate container that runs that's sort of our proprietary networking and all the networking runs through that, which allows us to restrict it to, for instance, uh, only HTTP and HTTPS. Is that Roughly. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. Uh, that's that's uh, ninety percent of what I wanted. I guess my question is like, why couldn't I just run, have a job that um, uh, ran Apache Bench against the White House and uh, distributed to a thousand nodes? Like Presto, it's a it's a DOS. Um, that's over HTTP. Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of sort of latency issues and so on. Um, Generally speaking, our network would be crappy for DDoS. Um, there are some things that, that we have um, on the server side for applications that uh, limit the number of requests to a given domain and things like this. Um, so th th this is really insightful. So it's a it's a effectively a centralized network. It goes through your sidecar container. The sidecar container goes through your gateway and then the gateway goes out to the world. Is that roughly right? Sometimes it works that way, actually. Okay. And, uh, sometimes it's basically a, a decentralized gateway, so to speak, or a decentralized uh, <coughs> networking and the constraints about uh, what's allowed. That's all running locally and all those constraints are enforced locally. Then there's some centralized accounting that, uh, that just keeps track of what's going on a little bit to, monitor for abuse and 
um, variety for variety of reasons. Um, so, that makes complete sense. I'm, I'm sure everyone's bored with this. It's uh, just a, okay. Topic. Yeah, we can talk about it later. Okay. Okay, let me get back to the demo. It's asking for our authenticator for this node. So enter that string that would be provided by Charity Engine and setup's complete. So now let me switch roles and assume I'm someone submitting a job to this network. Right now we just have this one this one node that's operational, but in a in live environment there'd be thousands, hundreds of thousands of nodes, and then hundreds or or even thousands of jobs being submitted. Uh, but here we can we can start with one. So run this remote job CLI. Give as an input file this address, which is an IPFS address. A different authenticator here because this is a different, different person. We're going to specify which application to run. Again, it's a Docker container. This one by itself doesn't do much, but we will give it a command line and the directory listing. Directories, output the results. We can specify how many copies of the job to run. We only need one for the demo. The result storage will put in the estuary. Debug mode gives us a little more information. And lastly, set the poll frequency. How often to keep checking the status of it. We enter here, this should start the job that's been submitted. In the background. Now, the now what we have to wait for is the node that's running Filecoin, running the Charity Engine client, is going to, to check in, receive this job, and we'll see the status switch over to downloading in a moment here. Once it does that, we'll receive the request, process it, and return the results. And now you see the status has changed to downloading. And once that's complete, it's really this, this simple job doesn't take more than a few seconds because it's directly listing. There it goes. You see that job has been completed. So that's it for the demo. Thank you for your time. Well done. Sure. Thank you guys for the for the presentation there. And um I actually have a lot of follow-up questions as well. I will post them though in the Slack channel for you guys <laughs> so that we can continue the conversation. Uh, unless, um, uh, Matthew, do you have anything else you want to share just to wrap up? No, I just wanted to um, sort of, I guess, put a, the last slide of the deck, uh, which was maybe just to emphasize, uh, we're really excited about being able to, uh, you know, help people in this ecosystem do cool stuff. It's ready to go, it works. Um, and we're, we're keen to see what we can all uh, do together. Well said. Thank you so much for sharing guys. Um, brilliant content and uh, I'll make sure to post a link to your guys site or any contact information in the channel as well so that everybody can get looped right in uh, to your project. Let's um, let's go ahead and transition then. So Stan, if you are ready, we would love to give you a few minutes to talk about your project as well. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I hear you fine. Let me just share screen here. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see my screen? Looks good. No, so I'll switch on my video here. Um, all right, so I will be talking about uh, decentralized search engine project. You can find a lot more information at our website here. So decentralized search, 
uh, as uh, you know, uh, we are now in the middle of uh, decentralization revolution where people try to decentralize whatever business is possible. But it's actually not that easy uh, process uh, putting business on blockchains or ledgers. So uh, one of the first businesses that comes to mind is the centralized search. Um, and by search, we mean this uh, set of uh, operations that need to be done in order to do a web search. As you know, uh, search these days is centralized uh, by, uh, it's run by uh, a few massive uh, uh, companies such as Google, uh, Microsoft, um, Baidu, and uh, there are some drawbacks uh, in how they do things. Uh, first of all, we have to trust uh, the results, and uh, there is no way to benchmark how accurate is the search. And uh, so it's not censorship resistant. So, for example, they can uh, suppress certain sites that, that they view. Um, there are multiple complaints from companies on how they manage uh, ranking system. Uh, and um, there is no way for users to choose uh, from different rankings. And you know, as you know, you might uh, need uh, different ranking algorithms for different purposes. Uh, people are different. They might need the specialized uh, ranking algorithms for web pages. So this is not provided there. And uh, uh, most importantly, perhaps, is that um, these search engines make their revenue out of users, and the users are basically not in the in this uh, feedback loop for um, in revenue sharing. Uh, so it has to do with the fairness of advertising. Uh, and one important thing is that uh, the broad research community is not, but, uh, has no way to participate in uh, constructing these uh, knowledge graphs and this underlying knowledge systems that uh, these uh, companies internally construct to ensure good quality search. And that's what they are going to address in this project. Um, so according to the architecture that uh, we implemented, uh, so <clears throat> The search will be done by a network of independent and trustless nodes. Anybody can join. Uh, so, roughly speaking, it's like Google search done by Ethereum network. So, imagine that all these uh, nodes that uh, were doing um, proof of work uh, computation uh, for for Ethereum suddenly switched the protocol and started to do. Uh, uh, basically search indexing knowledge mining as we call it out of web data uh, so there are multiple challenges of course and uh, which include uh, uh, basically verification that uh, the results are correct uh, because uh, the first thing that comes to mind when one thinks about decentralized search is that there will be hackers who will try to influence the ranking and manipulate it uh, in order to bring some sites on top of uh, the results page. Uh, but there is a way to deal with it, with this problem uh, using blockchain. So basically when uh, nodes will be doing all these operations, they will submit certain parts of uh, the data uh, to the blockchain or rather to uh, direct at a secret graph because uh, we expect large data volume here uh, and these computations can be uh, checked um, so the revenue system um, basically models the usual revenue system from uh, existing uh, search engines uh, except that it, uh, it is governed by a smart contract. So whenever there is um, a consumption transaction issued by the user's browser, it will go directly to the blockchain and will distribute uh, the funds among the node maintainers and uh, the user himself. 
We have native cryptocurrency which we call knowledge coin because it has to do with how this nodes mine knowledge out of the web. So we implemented a way to have multiple ranking systems. So there is uh, an algorithm market, as we call it. So anybody who thinks uh, that uh, he is knowledgeable enough to supply good ranking system can go and submit his rank in a specified format. And then the network, uh, but, but he will have to pay upfront because it's expensive computation. Then the network will pick the, up this rank and computer, and uh, then users will be able to uh, use the rank um, among others. And uh, the revenue from uh, uh, will also be shared uh, with the ranking uh, providers. So that's what we implemented already, but this also um, brought up a, a few other questions. Uh, for example, this um, uh, so we view rank as, as an example of a distributed computation. Uh, and that uh, led us to certain further questions, um, um, namely, um, uh, you see, as we, as we transition to Web3, uh, we have to consider decentralized computation with large amounts of data. And here we think mostly about uh, uh, decentralized computing is necessary for um, social networks such as uh, Twitter, Meta, and uh, recently there has been some effort, for example, decentralized social. Uh, and that uh, brings about uh, the notion of world distributed computation. And as, as we all know, Ethereum didn't really stand up to the challenge, except that L2 solutions may be actually uh, do part of uh, the job here. But uh, we started working on our independent um, uh, product um, in this domain. And here are some requirements. So first of all, we want to get rid of virtual machines so that arbitrary uh, language can be used uh, to, um, to perform computation on entity data. And uh, we want to separate uh, code submission uh, and um, its compilation and execution. So that actually led us to separation of roles of nodes. So entities is clearly the main um, sort of player here, but then there are also roles which uh, are listed here. So there will be special storage nodes, and executors, and sequencers. And so we separated um, uh, sequencers uh, into a special role, as we know that in DeFi, it's very important to uh, to orchestrate sequencing of transactions. As we know, this uh, emergent phenomenon of uh, minor extractable value, um, it, it's something that we have to keep in our system. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and then we also want to have flexible uh, consensus models in different parts of uh, ne the network and sub-regions of the compu uh, computing environment. In particular, we would like to have trust trusted execution environment uh, nodes in some parts of the system. Um, so another part of the uh, project uh, has to do with user data and uh, what we do with it, we, we call it um, uh, digital immortality for the following reason. Uh, so users in their uh, interaction with the web generate very large amount of very interesting data that, uh, that basically tells about what, what, uh, what's going on in the mind of these users. And here we are talking about eye tracking data, scroll data, screen history data. There are very many uh, channels uh, of data, and all this data is uh, savagely wasted uh, these days. It's not collected. 
uh, but this data constitutes uh, what we call web reflection or digital personality. And uh, the goal uh, for us is uh, to, uh, to create a set of tools that will facilitate uh, the collection of this data. Uh, with the goal of combining it into a certain uh, um, data structure, um, personalized data structure on which we can run uh, computations. Um, so we, we are working on creation of uh, a marketplace of this attention data that is uh, shared between users and um, uh, data providers such as uh, websites and uh, um, uh, basically other sources of knowledge. Um, so let me run a quick demo. Uh, so yeah. he and, and Stan, sorry to interrupt you. If, if you could wrap maybe just the next uh, one to two minutes, that would be uh, great. And that'll give us a little time to talk about COD Summit. Does that work for you? Right. Yeah, yeah right. I'm, I'm actually done. I'm actually done. So, um, so here, so we are running a um, small cluster um, that uh, on which we deployed our search, uh, some of our nodes for the search engine. So here the IPs, and if you go to this uh, two ports, uh, you can actually try out uh, the search engine. So it's a very small cluster. It's uh, probably not very meaningful, but uh, that's uh, but it's scalable. So we are very interested in uh, partnerships, especially with hardware providers, because uh, we are looking for uh, scaling our search engine, and uh, for, we are looking for partnerships also with advertisers and library, uh, libraries and tech data providers. And yeah, that's basically it. Let me just probably show you just one more thing. <coughs> yeah, so here is basically. Um, so here's the cluster that we are running here of AWS here. Just um, uh, come on. Just for machines here. So here's how. Um, let me see. Yeah, I, I tell you what, Stan. Would you mind if? Uh, publishing this in our Slack channel so folks can can follow up afterwards and they can run the demo directly, uh, that would be super helpful. Well, I, I will not uh, run this cluster for long because it's uh, quite expensive. Uh, but, um, but yeah, we can, uh, if you're interested, uh, especially if, if you're a hardware provider, uh, it will be great if you can, uh, you know, co collaborate on this and, um, yeah, we Very can good. go forth with this. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Dan. We appreciate it. All right, so now COD Summit Logistics and David. Thank you all so much. I, I feel terrible that um, I'm interrupting the uh, real work, um, but uh, there you go. Um, okay, so the COD Summit, again, this is uh, supposed to be all of us. Can you, everyone see my screen? All good. I, I, I can't. We can see it. The audio okay. level is a little bit low. So um, the, the URL to look to is this, codsummit.io. Please register here. We're trying to get uh, headcounts. Please tell everyone you'd like to register. Uh, please invite whoever you'd like and let us know, and we'll make sure to have space. But um, what we, you know, the nightmare scenario is that uh, we have too many people and, and we didn't book a big enough space or enough food. So. Um, now's the time. Uh, it does look to be very, very exciting and uh, a lot of really great speakers uh, coming up uh, there. Speaking of which, <coughs> I'll share this again to the sheet, but we're trying to fin finalize some of the um, talks. Um, I, I know I've talked to a lot of you uh, about the talks. We, um, if I've talked to you, we should uh, nail down exactly what your title is so we can get it in here. The thing that we uh, would love to publish by the end of this week on schedule, which is uh, currently open, you can see here, is um, uh, this sheet. <laughs> so day one will be at Timeout Market. Uh, that uh, supports about 150 people. We are starting to fill up, but uh, now's the time to um, uh, you know, get your name in so that we, we don't uh, overflow. Um, <clears throat> and then what our plan currently is to do day one at this uh, 150 uh, person spot, 
we'll have just a series of, of talks. I really would love this to be a series of things about what it means to run compute over data. This is not about uh, protocol labs or Filecoin or anything like that. This is about the entire space. Uh, because as, as someone mentioned, I don't remember who at the beginning of this call, there are so many interesting projects in this space. And, um, you know, I think we are, we are purely in collaboration mode at this point with everyone. So the more that we can talk about different approaches, the better. The way it lays out is what you see here. Um, you know, order still to be decided, but you know, it's roughly right. Um, intro that we'll do uh, back of the aisle. Then um, we have a special guest um, uh, for those of you that know uh, Anaconda. Um, Peter Wang, the CEO and founder of Anaconda, is going to be giving a talk on WASM and portable computing, which is really exciting. Uh, the Vision folks will be giving a talk on decentralized authentication. Uh, then Juan will be rounding out the morning with um, uh, landscape and impact of compute over data. Uh, when we get to the afternoon, we'll have uh, structured data in Web3. Uh, we'll have a talk about incentive models uh, about um, uh, from Gridcoin. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We have uh, EVM compatible Filecoin uh, on the VFVM, so um, I'm talking about that. Uh, we have uh, Spice AI who's doing a bunch of analysis on blockchains and other things like that in a computer for data format. So that's kind of more of a uh, customer face. And then we have some slots on the front day. I, you know, we've talked to a bunch of people. Um, uh, I, I, I know that we've, uh, if I've talked to you and, and I've said, you know, you have a talk, please let me know what your titles are and we'll try and slot it in. It's not the end of the world if it goes to the second day. Um, we're absolutely going to have spaces here. But um, you know, just trying to round out like the the, uh, the high level. Um, for the second day, the current thinking is to have two tracks in a mostly unconference style discussion. So uh, you know, one track is what it means to build a platform. Uh, so invocation, it, you know, talking about the standards we want to work on together, uh, SDKs, so on, interop, all that kind of good stuff. Again. These are, it's very unconferency, so we're happy to like, you know, slot whatever here is. And then the second half is data, uh, I think, data and usage. So what, how, you know, people need or want or are using HPC, you know, private, government, reputation, uh, you know, data pipelines, building models, so on and so forth. So that these are the two slots. Um, again, this is not intended to be me uh, talking to everyone else. Um, sorry, I'm just noticing my audio is low. I hope people heard me. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yep, we, we got Jim. Okay, that's probably better. Uh, is yep. that better? Okay, so um, this so again, this is not supposed to be me dictating the schedule. Please let me know if this is not compelling or if there are things you'd like to talk about. Uh, but this is roughly the two days. And uh, as soon as you do, as soon as you do get a talk, or if you want to get like have a uh, attendee like headshot here, uh, we're going to be adding these as well this week. Does anyone have any questions? I'll leave it open to everyone to go forward from there. Will there be a, like a virtual channel, like a Zoom link like, uh, for those who will not be able to be physically there? Absolutely, we will be. Uh, we will both have a Zoom link and record it. And what about uh, uh, contributing talks over Zoom? Is it possible? Contributing docs over Zoom, like a presentation over Zoom? Yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. You know, we have a lot of people on site, so I would probably bias towards saying um, we're, we're going to bias towards having people on site give the talks. Um, I, I, that's my vote. I, I will be honest with you. If, if the community says, well, let's go another direction, I will absolutely defer to that. I just, it is very personal. I've just never had a good experience with like people giving talks over Zoom. It's like super easy to check out. May I ask what's the capacity of the second day, Hayat? Uh, so the please. second day, each one of these is gonna be 75 people. You should know, uh, this is in timeout market. This is an Hyatt Regency. We'll have all this, uh, but it, it, there you go. So each one of these is 75 people um, open. Uh, oh, I, I had some other thoughts here, like, uh, you know, running COD at scale, like exactly what Kudos just did. Like, I'd love to have, you know, people who have run things at scale talk. Um, I think having storage providers uh, first day as well would be great. Um, but we shouldn't feel the need to fill up 
either of these. It's totally okay if we just get a small group together. What I'm really looking for is collaboration and, and joint um, you know, discussion. Any thoughts? Is this compelling? Is this nightmarish? Is this like, I'm looking at this, I don't want to be anywhere near this thing. Well, by way of suggestion, one thing that, that might be useful is sort of some way for people to kind of uh, communicate to others present what their capabilities are and what mm. their needs and pain points are to absolutely to some kind of matching. Absolutely. That, that was exactly it. So again, you know, I, this was my rough thing. The first day people, again, just talk from your experience. This is what we've seen when we went to try and do compute over data. Uh, this is how we're approaching the problem space. This is why we think it's compelling, whatever it might be. This day here, is exactly supposed to be matching. So people who are familiar with government data, for example, or want to run government data, this would be a good spot for you. People who want to talk about an invocation model or already have an invocation model, great, we'll do that here. Uh, you know, those kind of things. Does that all make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, possible to fit in there uh, an unstructured section, you know, people's needs may be quite idiosyncratic. Oh, that, that's a great point too. I mean, yeah, it, it, in truth, I'm I'm already breaking the rules of unconferences by doing it this way, uh, by having proposals now. Like in a true unconference form, you would not have anything until the morning of. Uh, but uh, I want to help people like, you know, get ideas about the direction to go. Make sense? Sure, sure. Uh, maybe there's okay. A well, uh, with all that, I guess we uh, have uh, uh, any quorum. Uh, I will be posting this um, spreadsheet there to the channel shortly. Um, like I said, oh, sorry. Um, if anyone has any thoughts, please add, add them there. But like, I really would love to nail all the stuff by the end of this week. So you mentioned that uh, on second day there were like storage providers. Is there any uh, way to get some idea like what, what are these companies? For example, I'm very interested in uh, like um, in, uh, in talking to uh, compute providers because we are going to launch our product. And it will be very useful to have some like a list of storage providers there somewhere. Yeah. Um um so is there a list of storage providers is that what you're asking for yeah right so that i can just click on it and the result like sifting through all the participants just just know who are dealing with hardware, Perfect. Who are hardware yeah, so I, i'm i'm happy to uh put you in contact i don't know who those i mean there's a big long list of them um send me an email and i'll put you in contact with the set of storage providers or at least Figure out what you're looking for, and um, and and figure out how you get answers. The the answers you need. Oh, thanks. All right. Thank you all so much for joining, and we will look forward to seeing you all in Lisbon very soon. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>